welcome to Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher today is the director of Bible Tracks Incorporated, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. And now for our Bible study, here's our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Welcome. Welcome to the Friday edition here at Bible Tract Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. Right now, why don't you, if at all possible, reach over and get your Bible out and join me as my Bible sits open to the book of Romans in chapter 2. Romans chapter 2, please. In a moment, I'll begin to read at verse 12. Along with your Bible, if it's possible for you to stop and take notes as we go along, I have an outline. I really do try each and every day to give a clear outline of the passage so that you can come back later on and think your way through it again to get even more out of the passage as the Spirit of God teaches you. But to that end, why don't you, along with your Bible, get pen and paper as well. Now, with a pen and paper handy, you'll be prepared to jot down our contact information. I have a free gift of a sample packet of gospel tracts to give to you. I'll say more about that here in just a moment. But to lead into our study time, let me start this way. Now, if you're hearing this broadcast on its normally planned hearing date, then you are listening on the day that we have come to call Good Friday. Good Friday. Friday. And the only reason it is good is that this is the anniversary day of Jesus dying on the cross to pay our sin debt. Now, his death was unjustified. His death was a known travesty to the judicial system. Jesus' death was cruel and vindictive. But this is what your sins and my sin demanded. Without the shedding of Jesus' pure and sinless blood, our sin debt before a holy God could not be satisfied. But when we, by faith, receive Jesus as our Savior, at that moment in time, Jesus' blood payment is applied to our sin debt account, and then you and I stand forgiven. In Romans 2, the word judge or judgment is used eight times times in the first 16 verses. And the final verse of my section today, which will be verse 16, says that God will judge people according to the gospel. Do you realize what that just said there? It's saying that the truth that God judges sins is part of the gospel that we've got to tell other people. But there's another great word that's used, but it's used only two times in these 16 verses. It's a wonderful word that means that no judgment will fall on a sinner. I want to tell you about that word before we get done today. So get your Bible, get pen and paper, join me, Romans, please, in chapter 2. I mentioned wanted to give you a free gift of a gospel tracts. And now a gospel tract simply is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. And I want to give you a sample packet which contains one each of all of our English gospel tracts. There are 40 tracts in that sample packet. The one in my hand right now is entitled, Are You in Danger? Are you in danger? In our passage, we're going to talk about people being in danger of God's judgment. This gospel track begins with the story of our founder out on a boat when he was 12 in the middle of the night. He ends up being alone in that little rowboat, and the only resource he had for seeing where he was going was the lightning coming down, and the lightning was a dangerous thing, but he was not aware of the danger of the lightning. He did not know the predicament, the peril he was in, but he was in peril nonetheless. And this track leads from that story into saying to people, your life is in peril because you're a sinner, but there is a remedy. There's a way out of that peril through Jesus Christ. 
Here's a great gospel track, Are You in Danger? Get it from us. It's in that sample packet. At the end of the program, my announcer will make known to you three ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. If you're unable to stay to the end of the program, you can order that sample packet by going to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible's open to Romans 2, beginning at verse 12, here's what the Bible says. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. For when the Gentiles who have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves, which, speaking about these people, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the meanwhile, accusing or or else excusing one another in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Stop, please, right there. Now, all this week, I have reminded us that verses 1 through 16 of chapter 2 has a particular person in view. It's a moral person. And the point of these 16 verses is that our moral uprightness may look good to others, but God sees the sins of the moral person. God will declare them guilty and judge them based upon his righteous judgment. My three-point main outline for verses 1 through 16 goes like this. The moral man who depends on his moral goodness to get into heaven is, an, first of all, an inexcusable man in verses 1 to 4. Secondly, he is an impenitent man, verses 5 through 11. And now, here in verses 12 through 16, the moral man is an intuitive man man, intuitive. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean simply that the moral man has inside of him an awareness and he has an alarm clock. He is aware of what is basically right and wrong. Plus, he has this inner alarm clock called his conscience, and that alarm clock will sound an alarm in his soul when he does things that are wrong against the intuitive nature of right and wrong that God has put in him. There is a very special word I want to give today, as I said, but first, let me lay out what is being talked about here in verses 12 through 16. If you've got that pen and paper handy, jot down three words. Here they are all at once. Word number one, universal. Word number two, undeniable. And then word number three is unveiled. Universal, undeniable and unveiled. Now, verse 12, my word there is universal. In verse 12, everyone who sins will be judged. It doesn't matter if they ever had a Bible as their holy book, if they had some other book that they call their holy book, or they had no holy book at all. All sinners universally will face the judgment of before God, the creator God, the maker of heaven and earth, the maker of people. He will judge all people no matter what standard of right and wrong they may have used. That's the word universal based upon verse 12. My second word, undeniable, is based upon verses 13, 14, and 15. If your Bible's open, look at them. Do you see those parents? Theses that bracket those three verses. These verses are an explanation as to why God will judge sin in all of us. It doesn't matter what holy book we did use or didn't have to use. You see, what is undeniable here is the reality that every person has a rule book. You may have the rule book of the Bible. Others may have the Quran and call that their rule book. But others, though, may have no holy rule book at all. All people, though, have a standard for understanding right and wrong. Verse 14 says that Gentile people, the people that basically have no holy book he's referring to here, all have by nature an internal or innate knowledge of right and wrong. And then in verse 15, 
a second undeniable fact comes out. It's that we have a conscience. Now, we all know that our conscience is not always an accurate measure for right and wrong, but if our own conscience says we've done wrong, then God, too, is going to declare us guilty. If we find ourselves to be guilty in our own hearts, trust me, God Almighty has already found us guilty. All right, universal, verse 12, undeniable, verses 13, 14, and 15. That brings me to my third word, unveiled, based upon verse 16. On judgment day, God will unveil our inner secret thoughts and secret acts. No sin, no matter how cleverly hidden from other people it may be, no sin is ever hidden from God. So, we are all brought to this critical fact, this critical truth. Even the moral, upright person in our society, our upright person in our world, all these people are going to be judged. Did they have God's word and know it? They may have. Then they're going to be judged by that. Did they have no Bible, but only their internal sense of right and wrong? Then they will be judged by that. But the point is this. All morally good people have sinned and will face God's judgment. Early in the broadcast, I said there was another important word besides the word judgment. The word is found in verse 13. It's found twice. The word is just or justified. That word comes from the courtroom setting. If a person was arraigned before the court and crimes were read against them, then evidence would have to be shown, and then witnesses would be brought in. But if the trial was over and the judge, he could look at all the evidence and that he listened to all the people that spoke as witnesses, and he might say that there is a lack of evidence, and he could declare the defendant to not be culpable for the crimes that he was committed. He, they said he committed the defendant would be set free and no punishment or fine would be inflicted. The day of judgment will come upon all men. We're going to stand before God, religious or not, moral or not, not a pagan person or not. All are going to be judged guilty for all have sinned. The Bible's going to end up getting there at the end of chapter 3. For all have sinned to come short of the glory of God. Some, though, will be declared justified or innocent of all their sin. In God's holy courtroom, some will be declared to be not guilty. Why? Well, not because of their morality, The pathway to innocence is through the gospel, the gospel. Verse 16 says God will judge all men by Jesus Christ. Jesus will pronounce our guiltiness or he'll pronounce our innocence all based on whether we have acted upon the gospel, the good news found in the person of Jesus Christ. Our ability to be declared innocent in the sight of a holy, righteous God depends on what we do with his gospel, not yours, not your morality, not mine, not our churchiness, but what we have done with Jesus. Have we understood that because of our wickedness and sinfulness, Jesus had to die? And have we received him? If you have not today on Good Friday, make Christ your savior. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes, a ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of all of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. That's 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. A faster way to contact us is to go to our website at BibleTracksInc.org. That's BibleTracksInc.org. There you will find more information about our ministry and details on how you can support Bible Tracks Incorporated. Thanks for listening, and may the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.